So the first thing I'd like to discuss is dancing. Dancing is a really big part of Cretan tradition and culture. There are 25 dancers danced throughout the region of Crete. Obviously, there are some that are more well known than others. Those dancers include Bedozali. Bedozali is a very well known dance um, which originated in Kanya. Uh, next, we have Susta. Susta traditionally is a pair dance um, and is a bidikto. So, a bidikto is just a dance that's more upbeat. You dance it on your toes. Um, Malavizioti also falls into the category of a bidikto and um, that dance originated in Iraklio. And next we have Sigano. Sigano is the lead up into a bedozali. It can be danced on its own as well. Um, traditionally, there are two steps, one leading into the other. And finally, we have Sirto. So Sirto is danced uh, differently depending on which state of Crete you're in. Um, slight variations between all of them. Uh, but I'd say that they're probably the five best known dancers of Crete. The next thing I'd like to discuss is why certain dances are danced during particular occasions. There is so much history surrounding Cretan dances and a lot of symbolism behind it as well. I'll go through my favourites um, and what they're symbolic of in modern culture. The first one is Susta. So Susta traditionally is a pair dance and you'll see it's danced at a lot of weddings. Obviously it's symbolic of love and romance. Uh, Bedozali is a very popular and well-known dance, symbolic of bravery and strength and resistance. And um, the Bedozali dance came about during the Ottoman occupation of Greece and Crete. Uh, so it's very significant in our, our history and our roots. Uh, I'm going to lump all the Bidikthus together because I do like an upbeat dance like Malavizioti and Bidikthu itself. Um, danced at a lot of panigiria, uh, joyous occasions, baptisms, that sort of thing. The next topic I'd like to discuss is Crete's ancient civilization known as the Minoan civilization. The Minoan civilization on the island of Crete was uh, around during the Bronze Age, so from approximately 3500 BC to 1100 BC and it's one of mankind's oldest and most well-known uh, civilizations. Tragically on the island of Sadorini there was a volcanic eruption which effectively spilled over to the island of Crete and wiped out the Minoans. Uh, astoundingly there are still so many remaining artifacts, architecture, symbolism uh, around today which is incredible considering the, the tragedy that struck the island. Um, Knosso in Iraklio was King Nino's palace and can still be visited today. I highly recommend it for anybody that has the opportunity to go. It's just incredible. Next, I'd like to discuss Spinalonga. Spinalonga is a tiny island located just off La Sithi, which is one of the four states of Crete. And um, while there's a lot of history surrounding Spinalonga, it's probably best known as uh, the leper colony um, in the 20th century. So from 1903 to 1957, it was used as a refuge for people who had been affected by leprosy. And um, during their, their time there, they people who, who had um, leprosy were given medical attention, food, water, and amenities that they weren't necessarily given um, on mainland Crete um, because they were kind of sheltered in caves and not really, um, it wasn't really brought to light. Uh, now though, Spinalonga is a lovely little tourist area. Uh, there's a fortress, which I highly recommend that you go and check out. There are boats leaving every 30 minutes, so it is a nice little day trip to go and have a look. A lot of history there too. Next, I'd like to discuss Sarikya. So a sariki is a traditional head wrap or headscarf worn um, still today as part of a stoli, a costume, or just with everyday clothing. So it's obviously got a very integral part in Crete's culture and Crete's history. 
Uh, there are typically white sarikya and black sarikya, both symbolizing and meaning different things. It's said that the black sariki with the fringes knitted into it are um, a symbol of the tears shed during the um, occupation by the Ottoman Empire and a reminder of the mourning and um, tragedy that struck the island during that time. A white sariki typically is worn during a joyous occasion, a wedding, a baptism, um, obviously both again meaning different things but still having very significant symbolism in today's culture. Next I'd like to discuss the mythology surrounding Zeus and Crete. Um, it's said that Rhea, Zeus's mother, gave birth to him in Crete and that he was hidden and protected in a cave in Psilorithi. Uh, a group of seven men known as the Kurites were taught the art of dance by Rhea and um, what they would do is they would dance a war dance which is thought to be Anuyano around the cave uh, banging their shields and their swords together in an effort to mask baby Zeus's crying um, again in an effort to protect him. Uh, we've tried to recreate that uh, story through our performance uh, recently at Adipodes in which we had um, a few of our students dress up as the Kurites and reenact that war dance that they danced to protect baby Zeus. Mm -hmm.